This is Bustin' Loose in Faith with Apostle Tebow and Prophet Tebow. This broadcast airs every Friday on My Gospel Soul at 12 p.m. Central Time. Bustin' Loose in Faith is a seed of faith evangelistic outreach ministry. We come to bring you word, praise, and inspiration. We want you to remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But with God, all things are possible. Make sure you share this show at 347 826-9424. Bustin' Loose and Faith Ministers would love to hear from you. Now, let's get into our broadcast with none other than Apostle Dudley Tebow and Prophetess Lisa Tebow. Right here on My Gospel Soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good and worthy to be praised. All praise, all glory, all honor belongs to him this day and forevermore. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we approach the throne of grace, we come to you humbling ourselves and need thy mighty hand today. Just thank you and praising you for your glory, your mercy, and your love. Just thank you and praising you for who you are, that you are God. And besides thee, there is no other to worship in spirit and in truth. Oh, Heavenly Father, right now, as we get out of the way, that you may have your way. Hide us behind cabins, cross, and run this, Mr. Clay. Use us, Father God, for thy glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And, Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we bind up all technical difficulties. Anything that will try to hinder the word of God from going forth in the name of Jesus. Prepare the people's heart to see thy word in spirit and in truth. As we invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to come on in like a rushing mighty wind, lead, God, direct, and ordain our footsteps here this night and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, uh, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you, and we rebuke you now. We take authority over the atmosphere right now, Lord, and we thank you for clear, uh, uh, holy clarity of the word of God to go forth. And land on good ground this day and for this night and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have your Bible, amen, I'd like you to open up to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. For ye see your calling, brethren. How that, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weaker, the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And base insignificant things of the world and the things which are despised has God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to nothing things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. This is the word of God for the people of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and to the doers of his word. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, just for the next few minutes, I want to talk about God uses the nobodies to become somebody for his glory. God uses the nobody to become somebody for his glory. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a basic message that may not be popular in the days that we are living in. Still is a method that God has established 
and used through centuries to reach people of those that are lost to the, to come to Christ that the kingdom of God may grow. God chooses the foolish thing of the world to confound the wise. He uses the foolish to shame the wise. Yes, beloved, God uses the nobodies to become somebody. Hallelujah for his glory. Child of God, not many of us were of noble birth, but in spite of our humble beginning, God still chooses us for a greater purpose. Yes, you've been created on purpose, for a purpose. You see, God has taken control of us as born-again believers, and he has molded us into his image and made us who we are right now in 2020. God wants to teach us that he can use the nobodies in this society, in this world, just like you and I, to become somebody, to be used for his glory. God wants to teach us power belongs to him and only he and only him and it's not from us. Yes, God has created the universe. He has created everything we see. The skies, the trees, the the bees, the, the butterflies, the grass, all that we see, the animals, the human being God has created. So, beloved, God does not want to use those people who are already in the world as classified as superstars and and are very influenced in this world system because these superstars are very difficult for him to teach simple lessons of obedience and faith. So people of God, people who are weak and considered as the least and smallest in their families, they are the ones who are special, very special to God because these men and women has the heart to say, Lord, I am a nobody. I am nothing without you. Will you, Lord, use me? I am a man or woman of unclean lips. Have mercy upon me this night. God uses the nobodies in order that we may become somebody for his glory. So, beloved, when God finds such a woman or a man with a willing heart, something extraordinary that happens within that person who is a nobody is thoroughly, is thereby promoted to the ranks of God availability or nobility. People of God, our God, the God of the universe, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he can use the nobodies in this world in 2020, in 2021, in order to make them to be somebody for his glory. You see, God, he's the one that tests us. He's the one that elevates us. And then he affirms us. He affirms his love for us. So, beloved, child of God, believer of Christ, God can use the nobody that society didn't reject. So, God can use 
the one that that the world bypasses uh, in this world to and make them uh, be somebody when we have godly character. This is what we as God's people need to cultivate and to work on developing our godly character. It will help us to live a life of holiness. Bible says in Isaiah 1, verse 1, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. There are two things we are told to do in this scripture. It says, first of all, we must be willing. We must be willing to do what God has instructed us to do. We must be willing to read his word, follow his instruction, and immediately obey what he has asked us to do. If we do that, there is a promise from the Lord that we will eat the good thing of the land. You see, God, he uses the nobody in society in 2021 to become somebody for his use and for his glory. Beloved, the key to God's blessing is willingness and obedience to his word. People of God, let us only boast of the Lord's strength in our lives. As the Bible said right now, that when it comes to God's strength, Isaiah 40 and 31 said, but those that wait on the Lord, he shall renew our strength. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. Remember this, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You see, God is the one who uses the nobody to make them somebody. Yes, child of God, our God, can use the nobody in this world to become somebody when we learn not to boast of ourselves. Yes, sometimes we can can get big-headed. Sometimes we can be lifted up in pride. But we must always remember to walk in humility of knowing that if God be for us, who or what can be against us? Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our God, the God that made the universe, the God that go to and fro and looking for for a man or a woman that will stand in the gap and believe and intercede where we live and for the world. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we can't boast in ourselves because without the Lord's help, without the Lord's help, we can't do nothing. So, so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, know this, and only Christ can set you free from the light of sin and death. Oh, yes, he did. The Bible says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have 
everlasting life. Sir, he's awesome. The God that we serve, he sits high, but he looks low. He knows all by name, the very hairs in all our head. Bible says in Proverbs 19, verse 20, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. There's a way that seemeth it right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death or the way of destruction. Our alliance, allegiance, must be on the law, looking on to Jesus as the author and finisher of our faith. God uses nobody in order to make them somebody for his glory. So, beloved, too often we think that God uses the talented. Rome, God uses a those who totally rely on him regardless of their natural talent. Yes, beloved, believe of Christ, God will even use your quickness and your aware awareness out and embarrassment, awkwardness for his glory. Remember what Romans eight twenty eight says, For we know that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and is called according to his purpose. So, beloved, remember this always, that God, our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God uses ordinary people in extraordinary ways for his glory. Yes, I'm going to say this again. The God that uses ordinary people in extraordinary ways for his glory. So, beloved, God have given each and every person a gift to steward for his glory. And God uses broken people and make them whole all over again. God uses ordinary people in extraordinary ways for his glory. Yes, God uses ordinary people in extraordinary ways in order to advance his gospel, his gospel message to the world. So tell them, God, if you are hungry for more of God and you desire to be used by him, then use whatever gift, talent, and ability you have and direct them in the right direction towards God and be motivated by a desire for his glory by using your God-given gifts and talent in the local church and beyond to edify God's people and to expand the kingdom of God. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, here is a key that I must repeat. As a child of God, if you are hungry for more of him and you desire to be used by God, then use whatever gift or gifts, talent, and ability you, you have and direct them in the right direction 
toward God, be motivated by a desire for his glory, by using your God-given gift and talent in the local church and beyond to edify God's people and to expand the kingdom of God. Yes, the decision, my brothers and sisters, is yours. You must make it and let God use you for his glory. Remember, this always, believe of Christ and trust whatever ministry or whatever gift you have to God and use them for his people. Use them in his power and to die by his spirit, by his glory. Watch as God grows, grows you up in his grace and uses you in an extraordinary in extraordinary ways in the lives of his people for his glory. You see, God uses nobody to become somebody for his glory. All praise, all glory, all honor belongs to him because he is God, and he's God all by himself. So there's always room for another true voice to tell the truth, to speak God's word in the times that we are living in. Bible says in the times that we are living in are given false doctrine throughout the land, preaching a, a different gospel from the true gospel. That's why we got to try the spirit by the Spirit to see if they are God or not. If the words that are being spoken is not in line with what God's Word is saying, always check the Scripture out for yourself that you may know. That's why it's so important to study the Word of God. Study to show yourself approved one of God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly divided, the word of truth. Yes, as we get closer to the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are living in a time and a season when people will believe a lie over the truth. But Jesus have already given us warning for, for a time in history that where people should lean towards a lie than the truth. Bible says in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So become a fellow helper to the gospel truth, the absolute truth. Become a truth teller by taking the word of God and speaking exactly what it says in the Bible. Biblical instruction before leaving earth. You see, the Bible is God's word. The Bible is our manual that have been left for us to live a life according to what the word is saying. Being a true, a true voice for the kingdom of God it is the only way to turn many, many people onto righteousness. Yes, people are watching our life. 
very closely if you don't think so. Do something you're not supposed to do. Be in a place you're not supposed to be. According to their word. According to the world's standards. We as disciples from Christ, we must have our mind made up. Our heart is fixed. That the world is behind us. And the cross is before us. We must live a life that is pleasing in God's eyesight. So we, therefore, are to receive such that we might be fellow helpers of the truth. See, the word said in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 9, found in him, not, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous one, which is of God by faith. We have to understand, according to the verse of Scripture, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus Christ, he is our Redeemer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one that bridged the gap through God and man. So he have left, have left us a um, pattern for us to follow. Jesus Christ, if you want to know about righteousness, if you want to know what to do and what not to do, follow the life of Christ. Read about it. Have your prayer time and devotion. Have your devotional time to where you can read your word and read about him in God's word. Where you can look to him, Jesus Christ as being our set example. The one that set the bar for us. The one that allowed us to our life to to be after. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life, Jesus Christ. So the word of God, again it says, in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 9, and be found in him, in Christ, not having my own righteousness, which is as filthy rag in the eyes of God, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous one, the one who shed his blood for all mankind, which is of God, by faith. By faith, everything we get from God is by faith. The Bible says in Hebrew 11 and 1 that now faith is the substance things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And them that come to God must believe that he is who he say he is, and he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So again, tonight we are talking about God uses nobody to become somebody for his glory. in my life tried everything but nothing turned out right then the master he took my
love made me whole when I was lost in darkness. Jesus saved my soul. He loves me. He loves me. From beginning to the end, I experienced His love. Now I found a true friend. He loves me. He loves me. Just read the writing on the wall. Because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, that is good news in itself, to know that the God that we serve is mighty. The God that we serve, he sits high, but he looks low. So he's always looking, and the angels is always looking. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. In 2021, as we come to close to the end of the year, we still have time to make sure that our life is lining up with the Spirit, with the Spirit of God, is lining up with the purpose of God, is lining up with what God has called us in such a time as this to do for His glory. Remember, God can use a nobody to become somebody for His glory. Yes? Will you be that will you be that one society has rejected? Will you be that one that society has bypassed? But God seemed fit that He chose you to be a spokesman for Him. We were all lost at one time. Oh yes we were. Before Christ I was a lost sinner just like everybody else that has been born and will be born upon this earth. But when we, when you come to know the Lord for yourself, hallelujah, the world and society may have rejected you, but when you come to know the Lord for yourself, you surrender all to him, and he accepted you just the way you were. Tore down from the floor up. He accepted you in the beloved family of God. Then you became a somebody that the God of the universe can use. You can be his mouthpiece, his hands and feet, and you can be used for his glory. Remember, we all was created on purpose, for purpose, for God's purpose. I just hope and pray that hallelujah, those that are listening tonight and those that will be listening at a later date, that the teaching that we are talking about, will bring inspiration 
will bring encouragement for your soul. Just to give you, and hallelujah, a little bit more to go on for the glory of God. So we just thank God. If there's anyone that's listening tonight, we come in complete agreement with you concerning what you are praying to God about. If it's in line with his word, I stop by tonight to encourage you. Hold on in there. Stand, stand still. Intercede. Do your part. Pray. Believe God. And in his time, when he sees fit, he will bring forth the answer that you've been believing him for. The request that you brought before him, he will bring it to pass. But we must do our part. Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fed of the rams. According to 1 Samuel 15, 22, the be cause of the words. So again, tonight, we are talking about the word of God that says in Philippians 3, verse 9, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous, which is of God by faith. We already established that in our own righteousness, in God's eyes, is that still to rag? No, that's not one. That's not one that that had measured up to the requirements that God wanted for mankind. There was only one that had that God allowed to to step up to the plate, and that in His name is Jesus Christ. He became that ultimate sacrifice. For all mankind. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Jesus, he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. For those that know him. Jesus said in the book of John, he said, My sheep knows my voice, and no other will they follow. And guess what? Jesus knows us too. He knows that we are, that we are one of his. Isn't that a blessing? To know that God cares for us. God said, care, cast all your care upon me, for I care it for you. So people of God, we turn someone to righteousness by leading them to the to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We share with those that are lost the born-again experience. Most of the time, we testify of where God has brought us from. And if God can do it for, for me and for you, who is saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, he's no respect of person. He can do it for someone else. And this can only happen by us testifying and telling them about the righteousness of God, whether by the use of printed material of the truth or verbally sharing with those that want to hear the truth, the absolute truth. This is all this is the only way that we can lead people to faith in Christ Jesus by varsing the gospel message. Not a watered-down message, but a message that is whole, a message that that even in these times that we are living in, they may call it old-fashioned, but God still sits high. God still is in the miracle working business. God still saves souls. So as we come to him and we realize that we need that we need help on a spiritual basis. God has saved us. Hallelujah. He has brought us out of the world where we we were considered as nobody. And he has, after we gave our life to Christ and we walked in obedience to the commands that was given to us, 
then we became somebody that God can use for his glory. Will you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, will you be a voice, a true voice for God's glory to be to be someone that will not back down, but even in the simple world that we are living in, stand up for righteousness because God is dependent on us to be his mouthpiece, his hands and feet, to tell somebody, hallelujah, about the goodness of the Lord. So, beloved, in these amazing times of modern technology that we are living in, you see, a person can reach across the world for Christ in the privacy of their home. Yes, through the use of the Internet, we can reach a, a small, limit group of people on our website as they surf the word, the website. But it is a fantastic way to preach the gospel. You see, right now, through the use of the Internet, God have allowed myself and my wife to come together and preach and teach on a local level and be able to reach on a global level. We never know who we, who we will affect, who we, will, who we will touch through the use of the airway. That's why we got to be, hallelujah, we got to be determined and be steadfast, unmovable in the things of God, and speak out the truth. Speak out God's word without no fear. Because God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind, according to 1 Timothy 1 and 7. So, child of God, remember this. The moment that you place your confidence, your trust in the Lord as your Savior, God credits you with Jesus' righteousness. He has forgiven us of our sin. He has wiped our slate clean. We are brand new creatures in Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I stopped by tonight to encourage you, saints of God, believers of Christ, stand steadfast, unmovable in the faith, believe in God to see you through, believe in God that he's able, ready, and willing to meet our each and every need. Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. For people of God, the culture that we live in is deteriorating as a whole, is deteriorating quickly and getting to the place where the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is we don't know the hour. We don't know the minute or the second. But one thing we do know, he promised to come back, and he's coming back for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Bible says in John 14, verse 1, 2, and 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me, in my father's house, or many mansions. It was not so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. Yes, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God uses nobody in order for them to become somebody 
for his glory. Bible said in the book of Matthew, 24 verses, 37 through 39, it said, but as the day of Noah was, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the day that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Yes, we are living in time, in difficult time. We are living in time where evil is running rapid throughout the land. But we as born-again believers, we still have to take a stand. We know that if we are not immune to the destruction and the wickedness throughout the world, but we must remember that we're in this world, but we're not of it. Look on to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. So, people of God, we need more true voices speaking the truth of God's word in 2021 in order to uphold the truth, the gospel truth and to uphold true Christianity. So, beloved, follow peace with all men and holiness. Without it, no man, no woman, boy or girl shall see the Lord. The people of God, every born again believer, a Christian, is expected to share the gospel message that God have allowed us to still be here, to be his mouthpiece, his hands and feet. The word said in the book of Proverbs 11, verse 30, it says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So let us be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, and go forth and tell somebody in the highway and the byway of life and let them know that the hope that lies within us, the truth and, and the light that God have allowed us to be a light to the world, we need to. Get, get beyond the four walls of a building into our communities, around our families, around our enemies. Let them know there is a better way. Jesus, he's the way. He's the truth. He's the light. God uses nobody in order for us to become somebody for his glory. So, beloved, if you are not sure what your gift is, learn to become a soul winner. Remember, anyone can become a soul winner. We all, no matter what office that you uphold in the body of Christ, our priority in Christianity is to let someone know about Jesus. Jesus said, Hallelujah. He's always set example. He said in John chapter 9, verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is today, while it is day, because night cometh where no man can work. So, beloved, God will meet. He will meet you. When you act out in faith, when you stand on his word, 
and you walk in obedience to what he asks you to do, and you quickly obey what is said. That's why each and every day, before you start your day, <coughs> excuse me, you should go in, in your secret closet and have a little talk with Jesus. And ask him, hallelujah, what is there that he wants you to do that day? So, beloved, God can use anyone to do his work. For an example, when we find in the Bible, God used it. He used Noah, who was a drunkard, for his glory, even though he was a preacher. He built the ark on dry land. And Noah was imperfect like everyone else, every human being on the face of the earth before Christ, who was the sinless one. He is the way, talking about Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the light. Another example that we're going to look at, he used, uh, Jacob, whose name was changed to Esau. He used, he used Jacob, who was a, a daydreamer, who was also a strict Christian, a liar. God used him. See, God is not looking for the perfect one because there's no one else. There's no one that is perfect. We all it. God, Jesus was the only perfect one. We're all under construction. We're all in a process that God is stripping us and using us for His glory. We'll, we'll continue until the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God used Joseph, who, who His brother had abused. God used him for His glory. God used Moses to deliver his people out of the bondage in Egypt. You see, Moses had a stumbling problem. He would study while talking. He looked for excuses, and his brother Aaron spoke for him. But God used them mightily. We know the story. When they got to the Red Sea, God told him, he said, what do you have in your hand? Moses took the, the rod, the staff, pointed towards the water, and the water divided itself. And the nation of Israel walked on dry land on the other side of the sea. God used it. He used David, who was the second king of the nation of Israel. David, he was an adulteress. He was a murderer, but God used him mightily. David had a compliment that God gave him, that he had a heart after God. He knew how to repent and get right with God. God used, he used Peter, the one that walked with him, Jesus. They came for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter was the first one to pull out his sword, to cut a soldier's ear. And Jesus picked up the ear, told Peter to put his sword back, and then he healed him. It took Jesus, brought him to Judgment Hall in front of Pontius Pilate. Peter denied Christ three times before the, court, the rooster crowed twice, all in the way when Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus looked for Peter. He found Peter. And he restored Peter. Peter went on. When we go to the book of Acts, it talks about the beginning of the New Testament church. Peter got restored, filled with the Holy Ghost. And he preached the message in the book of Acts that reached 3,000 souls in one service, God used Peter in a mighty way. God can use 
anyone he wants to. Remember that God, he doesn't call the equip. He equips the call. You see, it's not about our ability. It is all about our availability to be used for the glory of God. The God uses the nobody in order for him to become somebody for his glory. So, beloved, remember, we we can't live on the illusion that God needs greatness because he doesn't. No one can boast before God. All we can do is boast in him because God is the one who makes you valuable as his child. God is the one who puts you in Christ. Oh, yes, he is. Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we bring this teaching to a close, remember, God uses the nobody in order for them to become somebody that he can use for his glory. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Amen. Amen, Apostle. Great teaching. I hope that you have heard something that you can use in your everyday life. If so, please share that information with your friends and family, as well as the number 347-826-9424. And have them join you every Tuesday and Friday evening at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'd love to have you. Also, if you have questions, comments, topics you'd like to hear discussed, please feel free to write to us at P.O. Box 928-64, Lafayette, Louisiana, 70509. Again, that's P.O. Box 928-64. Lafayette, Louisiana, 70509. Please address your correspondence to Dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y, Thibault, T-H-I-B-E-A-U-X, or Lisa Thibault. We'd love to hear from you. Again, every Tuesday and every Friday evening at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, call 347-826-9424 and enjoy the broadcast. Have a great weekend, and the Lord willing, we'll be back with you again on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Have a great weekend. Love you.